Hey y'all, welcome to the Pungo Prairie. Now I'm fixing up this pair of Canada geese here, getting ready to put them in the smoker. Now if you've never tried it, you can't believe how delicious these birds are, smoked up, sliced thin, and served along with some brandy, raspberry, and orange marmalade dipping sauce. Now my good friend Jeff McWaters has invited me to join him along with some of the family at his farm on Maryland's Eastern Shore near St. Michael's for a couple of days of goose hunting. And I'm fixing to take y'all along with me too. So don't go nowhere, cause you don't wanna miss this. Having removed my brace of geese from the smoker now and placed in a pan to cool, I began to make a rich chicken stock to add to the cast iron Dutch oven, which contained a hearty Brunswick stew I was preparing on the stove. I thought the boys would enjoy a hot lunch in the field, as that would be about the time of my planned arrival at the Outlander the following day. First light Friday morning found me on my way from Pungo, heading north along the 17 and a half mile Bay Bridge Tunnel, which spanned the mouth of the Chesapeake, and then up Virginia's eastern shore to Maryland's as the sun came up. Once in Maryland, I shifted course northwesterly to Cambridge and across the Chop Tank River, then north again to Easton. There I would make a quick little stop at the Amish Country Farmer's Market to pick up some thick-cut cowboy ribeyes to grill up for supper after the hunt on Saturday night. Some real country bacon and smoked ham hocks would be just the ticket to season the pigeon peas and rice and Kentucky Wonder Green Beans, which I was sure these boys from Paducah would have on hand. I was only mildly disappointed that this visit to Esh's Meats in the market would only yield up boneless ribeyes this time instead of the bone-in I was hoping for. Back in the truck, a 10-mile drive west on Route 33 from Easton, I arrived in the quaint little town of St. Michael's on the western side of Maryland's eastern shore. This put me right on schedule to arrive at the Outlander farm in just enough time to heat up the Brunswick stew and cornbread to serve in the field. The waterfowl blind location was only a short gate arrive from the house, where I was sure Jeff, along with his brother Tim, and their son and son-in-law, both named Hunter, imagine that, would all be and starving by now. And we have arrived. Alright, lunch. Uber lunch delivery. Lunch yeah. Lunch, yeah. Uber Eats. Post Uber Eats on our way. All right, that chicken was kicking yesterday. I got all these, well, it was actually more than one. I got their feet all steamed up in a pot, grossed out all my girlfriends. Brunswick stew in a Yeti cup. See, that's, Cheers. I, that's the difference between- Oh, you should got me one of them big Yeti Pongo cups. Pongo and St. Michael's. More. Down there, it's in a solo cup, that's right. getting cold by the second. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pay a hundred bucks to see a goose come land on top of his head right now. The afternoon hunt was quiet, 
so I headed back to the house to get supper working. Got the honey mustard and horseradish sauce and the red raspberry and orange marmalade, goshu yang and ginger sauce. And right here is a nice plump pecan smoked Canada goose and some bagel crisp rounds to serve it up on. And we're gonna carve that up for some appetizers. That's what I'm talking about. And there she is, all carved up. We just got a good shower now. All right, well. So who killed those geese? A friend of mine at home, James Armstrong. So right I'm here, it looks good. Should I try it? You can. Like, These are some bagel crisp, right here, bagel crisp. This is a red raspberry and orange marmalade with a goshu yang, which is a Korean chili sauce mixed in with it, and um, some ginger, fresh grated ginger. This is a honey mustard and horseradish sauce. Oh hell no! Oh, all right. Should so, I go ahead and try it? Some the please do. YouTube people, please too. I might not get any of Jeff and Hunter get on there. Oh my goodness. Hi, <laughs> right, Hunter. Oh. Let's see here. Wow. Bill, that's off the chart. He's going for the honey mustard. Well, there's plenty of both. <laughs> that's good. What's in your brine? Well, there's brown sugar. And kosher salt, yeah. pickling spice, garlic, crushed garlic. Um, the what marmalade. else? That's about it. Well, yeah, it's just four ingredients: the salt, kosher salt, brown sugar, pickling spice, and crushed garlic. Then you bring it to a boil and let it simmer for about an hour, so all those flavors release from the dried pickling spices right, and, right, the, right. and the garlic and all. And then you cool it down. You cool the brine down. And then you put the geese in there mm -hmm. in a cool brine. If they're in the freezer, you can pull them out right out of the freezer, put them in the brine. Okay, so pull them out of the freezer. Just you put, just them, in put the them right in the brine and they'll thaw out in the brine and soak for three days in that brine. Wow. And then you smoke them. I fill them with uh, oranges and apples and celery and onion and parsley. And then when they're in the smoker, I baste them down with pancake syrup. You don't need maple syrup. You don't need expensive maple syrup because the all the pancake syrup does, it keeps the skin moist. When, when, do, you, when do you do that? I, I smoked the, the geese I smoked. Um, no, I mean, when do you put the pancake syrup? Oh, while they're in the smoker. Just baste them with that. When they're do it, probably, you know, once every couple of hours. There's very little calories in this. Right? <clears throat> Sure. Thanks. Yeah, I don't think, I mean, there's more calories in the dip than there is in the dip. I know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but uh, it's, it's vegan. Even, it's a good vegan uh, recipe. It does not even taste like Because the geese are vegan. Oh, boy. Here geese, we are. The geese are vegan. So. <laughs> Look at that. All right, so Jeff, this is a honey mustard and horseradish right I'm here. Throw that. And then the other is raspberry, mm. orange marmalade, Ooh. and a goshu yang. Uh, uh, Korean chili yeah. sauce with fresh mm. grated ginger. Mm. Wow, that's a beautiful lean meat right there. Hunter and Jim Tong nose up in the creek this morning. <laughs> yeah, I wish. I think they are Eastern Shore oysters though. They taste like Bayside to me, they're a little less salty than the seaside ones. But they're good either way. They're pretty. Batch cock, smoked chicken. Yeah, buddy, we are blessed here at the Outlander Farm. <laughs> Jeff McWaters, the chicken king. Look <laughs> at that. Bills. Oh, it doesn't look very good at all. I know what that is. Those chickens were running around the yard this morning out back at that market. <laughs> we had to get them. We had to get them early. Facing that last one, he cut his head off for a while. Holy guacamole. Look at that. There we go. What do you think, buddy? 
little smoke oh. on those bad boys. Hey, the Outlanders, cool tonight. Beautiful, dude. Warm inside. All right, we got the pigeon peas and rice right here with the Andre sausage and bacon. And over here is a Kentucky Wonder Italian cut green beans with one of those big, plump, juicy Amish farm market ham hocks. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Bill. What I got to figure out, how can it be Kentucky Wonder and Italian cut? Well, because uh, you ever heard of immigration? Uh, yeah, I like immigration. <laughs> I think that's great. Especially Italians that a bunch and of Italians that came down from Ohio and and grew some green beans and called them Kentucky Wonders. <laughs> come here, come here. Here we go. Just trying to kind of organize this a little bit here. Mm. There we go. Just wash my hands too. Make sure all the viewers out there see that and know that. Those are some pretty chickens. Jeff, there's no BBs or number two shot in that chicken, is it? Talk. All right, Mr. Bill, we thank you very much, sir, for this. What's the force? Well, I don't know. You contributed pretty heavy, I think. I don't know about that. <laughs> Nothing like yours, so. Timmy, on beautiful it? stuff. Sure, Lord, we bless this food for nourishing our body. We just pray that Chad makes a safe trip up from Virginia Beach and we just had a wonderful time fellowship together. We thank Bill for his unending cooking experience and teaching us about it. We pray that uh, this whole situation that Washington DC works itself out in a, in a kind and gentle way and uh, pray this food for nurture our body. God bless, amen. Amen. Well, here we are at the Outlander. Nice rainy early morning. morning. A lot of these fine gentlemen in the blind here. Some Kentuckians and some hoodlums. Decide if two guys are going to shoot, shoot two geese, and then next time two of the guys, well, we can just all unleash on the first one. But we might be done if we unleash on that first one. Mm -hmm. All everybody's shooting at once. We might kill all our geese. So we just is how do y'all want to do it? Is there a guarantee we're going to get another shot though? Even though you turn them off when the geese are working, do you ever wonder that they'll flare a geese? I, uh, that white wing, I, I don't think it would. Well, and they've awesome. never done it to us. If we're with Kentucky, we're doing it. It's just that, no, you can't that motion I don't like. Well, let's take them out. Tim McWater. <laughs> See you, buddy. Thanks for that great meal last night, too. Yes, sir. Okay, hi. hi. Kill him, boys. That's a jewelry on. Hey, 
and then whenever those got up. Well, I thought it was somebody not looking at me. Just call it to you. Oh, we do? Here, give me a bump there. All right, good job, guys. Okay. Uh, Pretty work, boys. Hey, all right. Pretty work. Good all right. Boys. Another one bites the dust. Well, I guess you boys are finished. Yeah. For today. <laughs> Pretty work. We can still pick up some ducks. Well, that's true. Okay. You can't get some ducks. Well, that's pretty work. Ow! 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 Nothing like getting your limit of uh, Canada goose and coming there and having fried oysters for lunch, is it? Just big bay, baby. <laughs> no, it was hard. <laughs> it was hard getting those oysters off the bed. Yeah. But we got them. Did you have to? Would you have to tone them oysters up from yeah, the pond the yeah, geese were landing yeah. in? <laughs> While we're on them. Now, what do y'all know from Paducah, Kentucky, about, about frying up some oysters? I don't know. You get practice with mountain oysters? No, we got no, 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 no. We got practice <laughs> with uh, frying all kinds of stuff there. You know, frying Cat, eggs, and catfish, and squirrels. Yeah. What temperature do you fry it, Jeff? Uh, 375 ish. Mm -hmm. I can get them pretty hot. Yeah, that way it gets the uh, the pan cook crisp it up without. Yeah, do you see them over there? This is a little smaller. Mm -hmm. I don't really agree. Now this is a pork butt I smoked up back in Pungo before Christmas. We had it frozen. And we're finishing it off in a Traeger here, warming it up. Kentucky yeah. style. Mm. Awesome. More grub. Good stuff, Bill. Amazing pork. Well, I don't know about that. You seem to like this. You've got to get used to that Kentucky <laughs> style like barbecue. TV you can all, all like. Congratulations. Red sauce here. The big ass dirt mile. Red sauce. It looks good. And he's like. <laughs> we're from the Red State barbecue sauce. <laughs> Well, that's one thing you got on Virginia's for sure, is you're a red steak. <laughs> Meanwhile, here in the galley, we got the cowboy beans going on with the ground beef and the peppers and the jalapenos and tomatoes and molasses, the pintos, the red beans, the white beans, the black beans, a little green pepper and onion. Now that the boys have limited out on Canada geese this morning, finished lunch they've headed out to a point overlooking the water right outside the kitchen window here which i'm going to show you to set up a little spread hopefully to get some duck action going this afternoon i'm just wrapping up the prep on our double stuff twice baked potatoes and prepping those beautiful thick ribeye steaks that we picked up yesterday at the amish market and i'm gonna go out there and join them let's go catch up with the boys I had to change hats for this waterfowl hunting. Don't want to flare no bird. Anything to it? Just hanging here. Seen any Just come in at all? Just blending in with nature. Uh, no, no, we've been pretty, pretty flat. The well, breeze is pretty dead. Good afternoon for hanging out. Yeah, they're just in position.
second one I found today. <laughs> Waterfowl mind. I got the. I'm geared for the deer, so that's what I'd rather see. But. Too, because I don't smoke really. What are we cooking the steaks on tonight? Well, we can cook one of these up. How about that? Yeah. Hunter, what are you going to do with the whole bird? You going to smoke it or are you going to... I'll probably roast it, honestly. Roast it? Yeah. yeah. My wife doesn't really like smoked food that much. Okay. And honestly, I'll probably give it over to my wife and mother-in-law and tell them to have fun with it and they'll do something really good. doing a hole in two, Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna try with these goose breasts that these boys shot this morning and just cleaned up. Sliced it real thin on a bias. I do this with wood duck. I've never done it with goose. We're gonna try it. I got some butter and garlic kind of getting warmed up in the pan here. And we're gonna sear this goose breast right here about 20 seconds on a side and then we're gonna serve it on a cracker with some brie cheese. You shave a few of these slices thin on bias. Butter turned up here, nice little heat going. Just let that garlic release a little flavor into that butter. I want this to be kind of high. Temperature wise, we're going to let that butter sizzle. We're going to go 20 seconds on each side. We'll start counting. I'll put the last one in. All right, we're going to flip it. Little palm for this. Huh. All right, about 20 seconds there. Oh, what, what is that? That's cotton? Yeah, that's a goose we got today. Y'all got today. Oh, and I'm going to put it right here. A little bit of salt, not too much. All right, we'll take it off of there. Sorry, sorry, I got you. Right. Right. We got some tongs somewhere. Yeah. Right here, right? Some little tongs. <clears throat> All right, I'm just gonna put them right over here. I think they're hard to grab. Ah, oh, you lost one, one. Yeah. casually. Oh, those are weird little cones. Alright. We're right over here. Alright, Hunter. Hunter, you be the guinea pig. Taste test one. Get you uh, some brie cheese. Alright. Lay the brie cheese on the cracker and taste one of those things. I don't have no idea what it's going to be like. Turn that. Well, that's bad. it's going to be better than the crow that we would have had. <laughs> <laughs> With wood ducks, this is really good. Mm. Just basic, real simple. Yeah, real good. You can taste the garlic, butter. Is it tender? Is the goose still tender? Didn't get too cooked? No, it's delicious. Okay, cool. All right, I'll do a few more if you want. Yeah, that's real good. Go ahead, jump on in there, Tim. Jump in. Uh, go ahead, Hunter. Let's see what Hunter Harris thinks about it. We got here. You gotta get some brie cheese now. Uh, I'm going. Oh, you're going different cheese. That poor goose was swimming this morning. Now he's chewing on you. <laughs> you're chewing on it. <laughs> poor goose. <laughs> <Not even>. <laughs> <laughs> Which one? I'm gonna go with the brie. Where's it? 
What did you do with yours, Hunter? Just brie and what? Yeah, brie and brie goose. And, brie and goose. That's brie it. Brie and goose. All right. Just real simple. Yeah. Oh, Yeah, sharper knife. Here. That's it. Cut it with that. The whole thing. Yeah. There you go. All right, so T-Paw, which they commonly refer to me as, is going with the brie and the goose, straight up. Wow. Wow. <laughs> I have to try it and see if y'all are just putting me on. <laughs> All right, we're gonna try something different here. Our tongs are missing in action. We're gonna try to reverse sear these ribeyes, I'll leave that one in the middle, on the Traeger here, started out on the Traeger anyway. But I gotta find them tongs. All right, this will be a process. Exactly, I usually do this on charcoal, offset heat. So this is a total experiment. All right, we're 14 minutes in. We found our tongs. We'll give our steaks a flip here. Oh man, they're looking right on time. Huh. Just gonna drizzle what was left of our marinade right on top so that don't go to waste. Another 14 minutes on that side. All right, that's about 28 minutes total now. Let's see what we got. I'm thinking we're gonna be a little bit under 100 degrees. We don't have bones here. Yep, we're 97. We gotta bring them up just a little bit more. I forgot to put the ground pepper. So I'm gonna put a little ground pepper on them. Give them another flip. Traeger's doing a good job on this process, it looks like. I'm going to give them about maybe another six or seven minutes. How we doing out there, guys? Captain Bill here is just doing another marvelous, marvelous job. All right, Jeff, we're going to give them about another five. Yours is going to have to stay on there a little bit longer because you want it medium, but that's okay. Yeah. Medium's good. <laughs> we'll get about another five or six minutes. We're going to pull two of them off, crunch them up good in the foil, mm. leave Jeff's on. I want to get Jeff's up to about maybe 125 internal temperature like before that. we crunch in. <laughs> and the old trigger's doing pretty good. we got to yes, get you is. one of these. Yes, it is. All right, we're going to put these rascals off of here, at least two of them. Brush them up. Start with that one. Nice tight wrap. You want it, this pull to be about skin tight on this meat. I'm going to set that one out of the way for a second. Get that one. Is that pretty or what? Pull kind of hanging together there. All right, we're gonna take these two right on into the kitchen here. All right, we're gonna let those sit there and relax. Put them right on this board. We're pull it free. We got our twice baked potatoes, double stuffed. Jeff, you get the oven. Good, buddy. Why don't you come out? That he get you right now, boys. And they're going right on in here. My those steaks are resting. All right, All right. perfect. <laughs> All right, man. Our steaks have rested here. I'm just going to put them right on this gas grill, which, like I say, I normally use charcoal, but we don't have that tonight. We're going to give it a nice sear and finish them off. How we doing? <laughs> Looking good. That one's yours, Jeff. 
Got your name on it. See right there? It says, I can see it. J E F. <laughs> All right, we'll get our potatoes out of the oven here. Oh, yeah. All right, got a little paprika going on here. Got some parsley, some chives, and a little bit of chopped up red bell pepper. Make it look like Christmas with the red and green. That's what I'm talking about. Double stuff. Give this one one last flip. All right, dear Lord, we just thank you for this time together. We thank you for these men, the blessings you've given us, this great food. Bill has done so uh, much great work to prepare it. The game, the waterfowl we had today, and the camaraderie and the safety we need. Thank you for all these things. And bless the rest of our evening and bless this food. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And go cats! <laughs> I don't know about that. This is the cowboy beans. Jeff got some nice bread. We got twice stuffed uh, baked potatoes here. Butter sour cream chives. Alright, we're gonna start with this right out of here. Moment of truth. The best part about hunting is not so much the birds circling the spread or even the shots fired that fill our limit, though that is the excitement we always look forward to. The best part is the camaraderie, the brotherhood, the conversation, the memories made from the moment that will be the stories we will share for a lifetime, the taking of life that becomes the sustenance for our own as provided for by our Creator gives the hunter a keener appreciation for the bounty delivered from being a field. I think there is somehow a bit more reverence paid in the way the hunter prepares their harvest on which to feast. It's not just another meal, it's a celebration. A celebration of the bird, a celebration of friendship, an homage to the events of the day, an acknowledgement of divine providence. Goodness. I'm always reminded of the words written in Psalm 8 on every hunt. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beasts of the field, and the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth.